Well, next Sunday, we are going to hold our communion service. In the non-subscribing Presbyterian Church, we tend to hold communion twice a year, usually in May and November. And for this church here in Downpatrick, and for Belee, and for Clop, and for Dunmurray, and for Banbridge, this is the pattern we have for holding communion, May and November services twice a year. And there's no particular reason for having uh, services in those months. There's no part of the Christian calendar being marked by them. But it is the way it's done. It's the way communion is spaced out for us. So with the current lockdown, our next service in May will be a virtual online service. But in accordance with our tradition, this will be a service which is open to anyone. So I thought it'd be useful just to say a few words about the way we understand communion in our tradition, because it's always a useful thing to do. And for anyone viewing one of our services of communion for the first time, it might be a helpful thing. So there are a few churches that have additional communion services now, maybe around Easter, and um, there might be one or two that have moved to quarterly services. But generally speaking, our communion services are twice a year. And one of the features of communion uh, for this congregation and also for Bally Clock and for Dunmurray and Banbridge is that they follow the traditional way of celebrating communion. And we can have a look at some of the churches uh, set out for communion, the way it's done in this way. So in our churches, tables are placed the length of all the aisles and benches alongside them, and the whole congregation is invited to sit at the tables. And the elements, the bread and the wine, are passed from one person to the next. So the minister or the minister and the elders might place the, the bread and the wine on the tables, but it's the people themselves who share the elements with each other. And this is the traditional way of uh, doing communion, which goes back, goes back right to the, the start of the 18th century, back beyond that, back to the, the origins of Presbyterianism in Ireland. So that's one feature of communion for our churches. Now, clearly, that won't be reflected in our worship this month, uh, nor do we know when we can go back to doing communion that way, but we look forward to the time when we can because it's important to us. But communion is an important service to us, and that's one of the reasons why it was traditionally only held twice a year. Another reason was because of the logistics. If you think when this church was built in 1711, there were possibly as many as one and a half thousand members. Holding a communion service was a, a major exercise. It wasn't done lightly. It took a lot of organising. And it also took a lot of spiritual preparation. The ministers would have preached to explain the meaning of communion, to try and make sure people were on the, the right um, mental and spiritual and theological wavelength to appreciate this service of communion. But the important thing about communion as it developed in our tradition is that it became an open service. It wasn't exclusive, it was open to all those who came with the right spirit. And this is recorded at the very start of the non-subscribing Presbyterian movement. In Belfast there were two Presbyterian churches and at the time of the first um, subscription controversy a third church developed, it split off and the first time they held communion in that third church, the ministers of First and Second Belfast turned up for communion and they were turned away. So that, that's one of the, uh, I think Professor, the late Professor Barclay did, described that as a, a stain on the history uh, of the, one, one of the worst of many unsavoury elements during this period, he said. And of course it was, but we have always said no communion is open to those, to all those who come in the right spirit. So when we hold our service, our online service, everyone is welcome to join in at home. And people at home might want to consider bringing a small 
glass of wine as they sit in front of the television or in front of the computer or in front of the tablet. Uh, if not wine, any other thing will do, water, it doesn't matter, or a piece of bread, a piece of shortbread, just having something there, just to participate in the service at home, because that's something everyone can do if they want to. So communion is open in our tradition. Early on in the Presbyterian tradition, communion tokens were issued to members and you couldn't take communion unless you had a token and tokens were withheld sometimes by the session from different people for different reasons. Well, long ago, our churches dropped that idea. Our church's theology would be rooted ultimately in that of John Calvin, but we developed more liberal ways of understanding the church, what it means to be a church, and what it means to celebrate communion over the centuries. So our service is an open service. So all acts of communion need certain parts to that service. They need the words of institution, the words given by St. Paul. They need prayers for the people and prayers for the world. And there are, very, there are many different ways of performing a communion service. A few years ago, we published this little book, European Perspectives on Communion, which had examples of communion services and reflections on communion, not just from the non-subscribing Presbyterian Church, but from remonstrants in the Netherlands, from Unitarians in England and Welsh-speaking churches as well, from Hungary, Transylvania, uh, from the French Liberal Association and from the uh, Free Christian Union in Germany and Switzerland. Uh, the book is now out of print, but I intend at some point to uh, upload it uh, online so it can be uh, read by a wider circle of people. But in the service, the example of a service for the non-subscribing Presbyterian Church written by Tom Bannum, Tom includes another part of the service that is essential, and that is the invitation. And in our tradition, that is an open invitation. And that's an ex invitation that's extended to all those who will be watching online next week. But this invitation is something that I include in every service of our communion. And I'd like to read it now just to underline the point that it is an open service. So this is what the Reverend Tom Bannon wrote. We are a congregation of sincere worshippers of God and followers of Jesus. We know through a long history of arguments and persecutions how hard it is to find words which can express the depth and meaning of true religion. Therefore, casting aside all unneighbourliness, we welcome in our service of common witness, communion and renewal, all whose hearts are moved by the love of God and a sense of Christian fellowship. The holy table in this place is open to all without creedal test or confession, as is the banquet of life God spreads before the world. So on Sunday, we'll be holding our online act of communion and everyone is welcome to join us and we hope that you will and please do come prepared if you wish to join in that service at home but it'll be available online from the first Sunday in May. <laughs>